Here's a very common problem. You recorded a game at a high frame rate, let's say 120 frames per second, and you did it because you wanted your footage to look great in slow motion. And it does. But then you decided to use some of that same footage at normal speed, and that silky smooth cinematic playback all of a sudden started to look much more jittery and even choppy at times. Is it fixable? Are you doing something wrong? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name is E, I'm a professional sports videographer, and today, even though we're gonna talk about frame rates a lot, the real subject of this video is convenience versus quality. But more on that later. For now, let's talk frame rates. First of all, you need to understand that there is no such thing as moving images per se. So what video really is, is a bunch of still images back to back to back that create the illusion of movement. So your frame rate is the amount of images or frames per second. Another thing you should know is that the frame rate is not a quality metric. So in other words, a higher frame rate does not mean higher quality. So it doesn't matter if you're filming at 24, 30, 60, or 120 frames per second. What really matters is how you use it in post-production. For example, 24 frames per second footage played in a 24 frames per second timeline will look perfectly fine. This is actually what you're looking at right now. And if my video was shot in 30 frames per second and edited in a 30 frames per second timeline, the quality would be just as good and same goes for 60 frames per second footage in a 60 frames per second timeline. The only difference is that a video shot and exported at a lower frame rate like 24 is much more cinematic looking, while a video shot and exported at a higher frame rate like 60 is gonna look much more vivid and lifelike. But again, that's not a difference in quality, that's just a different look and style, which I wish I could show you like a side-by-side -side comparison, but unfortunately, you can't export a video in different frame rates. So when you're filming a game with the intent of slowing down your footage in post, you typically film at a higher frame rate like 60 or 120 frames per second, and then you use that footage in a 24 or 30 frames per second timeline, which allows you to slow it down without losing any quality. For example, in a 30 frames per second timeline, if you slow down your 60 frames per second footage to 50% of its original speed, your clip will now be twice as long and will display 30 frames per second instead of 60, which in a 30 frames per second timeline will look perfectly smooth. And the same thing will happen to 120 frames per second footage played at 25% of its original speed in a 30 frames per second timeline because 30 is one fourth or 25% of 120. But if you decide to play that same 60 or 120 frames per second footage at full speed in your 30 frames per second timeline, that's when things start looking a little bit weird. What happens is that the timeline literally skips frames. So for example, if you have 60 frames per second footage in a 30 frames per second timeline at full speed, the timeline will skip every second frame. But because you're still technically 60 minus 30 equals 30, so you're still showing 30 frames per second. So quality wise, you're still good. You're not gonna lose any quality, especially if there's not much movement in your image. But when you're filming sports and there's a lot of movements by your camera, your subjects, a lot of moving parts basically, um, when those frames are dropped, there's a chance that in your camera movement, that's gonna create small jitters. And at 60 FPS, it's not gonna be very noticeable. Probably only like other videographers would notice, but the general public, not so much. But those jitters become a little bit less subtle if you're filming at 120 frames per second. Because now to fit in a 30 frames per second sequence at full speed, you're dropping 90 frames every second. Again, you're still showing 30, so quality wise, you're good. But when you're dropping 90 frames per second while doing a pan from left to right, for example, every little uh, unwanted camera movement or every little shake is gonna be exaggerated by those missing frames. And that's why uh, 120 frames per second footage can make your camera movements look quite jittery at full speed. 
And add to that the fact that your 120 frames per second footage is most likely recorded at a shutter speed of at least 1 over 250. And of course, that faster shutter speed that translates into less motion blur is going to stand out and again, look more jittery than the rest of your footage. Because when you slow down a clip, you also slow down its shutter speed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just you, me, and the odds. We stuck together, we two peas in a pod. You dealt a bad hand, I'm there seizing the cards. We'll never be separated till we see in the gods. We've been low together, high forever. Long as we go together, we'll die, we'll never be alike. Couldn't let the darkness try you ever. Truth in my word, you I lied to never. And when the world gets a little too hard. Wipe your eyes, put away your sorrow When it's war, I'll be leading the charge And I'll be still fighting for you tomorrow So, I'm guessing at this point that the big question on your mind is Is it really that bad? And if so, what can I do about it? But the question you should really ask yourself instead is As a sports videographer, should I prioritize convenience or quality? Because ultimately, the only way to avoid this phenomenon completely and achieve the best quality would be to film all your slow-mo clips at 60 or 120 frames per second and all your full-speed clips at 24 or 30 frames per second. But that's impossible to do when filming run and gun, especially at a sporting event where everything happens so fast and there's no way for you to know in advance which clips you're going to use in slow-mo or in full speed. So in my opinion, you have to go with convenience and film all your action footage at either 60 or 120 frames per second. Obviously, try to be as stable as you can and don't be afraid to use a monopod or a tripod if you need to. But at the same time, accept the fact that we will see some jitter in your full speed camera movements and that this is the very small price to pay for amazingly smooth, super slow mos and highly dynamic speed ramping effects. Yeah, even with a blindfold or in different time zones, could find my way to you with my eyes closed. There's nothing between us. Go to Mars and Venus, stand in front of every one of them rocks. They slinging and be a shield. And if you want to learn how to properly do a speed ramping effect or simply make sure you're not doing it wrong, I strongly suggest that you watch the video on your screen right now because there's no point in filming at the right frame rate if you don't know how to use it in your edit. 